iOS has a built-in timer class that lets us run code on a repeated basis. Now, this uses a system of publishers that comes from a different framework called Combine. We've actually used Combine several times in previous applications. Things like the at published property wrapper or the observable object protocol, they both come from Combine. But we hadn't had to worry about that. Because when we say import Swift UI, that will bring with it large parts of Combine for us to use. Previously, I have mentioned a different framework called Foundation, which gives us things like data and date and sort descriptor and user defaults and many more things, and that's where timer comes from. But when we have Combine as well as Foundation, Combine adds extensions to the Foundation timer class to make it into a publisher, so it can publish properties regularly. Publishers announce their values when they've changed, and that's exactly what timer does. You've seen previously at published, we use that inside an observable object class, it'll say, hey, my value's changed, who wants to refresh their Swift UI view? That's exactly what timer publishers do. When your time interval is reached every one second, every five, 10, whatever seconds, it will go ahead and say, uh, announcement to the world, I have triggered my timer, what do you wanna do? Now the code to make a basic timer looks like this. Let timer equals timer.publish, and I'll say every is one, tolerance can just come out, on dot main, in dot common, and delete options, then auto connect. And this line of code does several things all at once. It's saying first, this is a new timer that should publish values every one second, again, again, again. It'll ask it to run on the main thread. So it will announce things on the main thread, meaning that that's a thread where all our UI will take place. That's a safe place to do work. It says this timer should run uh, on the common run loop mode, which is the most common for iOS. Uh, run loops let iOS handle running code while the user's actively doing something, like scrolling through a list, for example. So a common's a good idea. And auto connect means connect this timer immediately so it'll start counting time and firing once a second straight away as soon as our view is created. It'll then assign that whole thing to our timer constant property so it stays alive the entire time. Now previously, back in project seven, I said uh, at published, this thing here, is more or less half of at state. Published is more or less half of state. And this means published will send change announcements that something else can monitor. So state sends the announcements and reinvokes body all in one go. Publisher says, hey, I've changed. And maybe nothing's watching, nothing cares, or maybe 10 things care, we don't actually know. It doesn't care. This announces to the world, I have changed, what do you wanna do? In the case of regular publishers, like our new timer, this we're making here, um, what'll happen is it'll say, hey, I've changed, but we still have to try and catch the value ourselves. We're gonna say, hey, when this thing emits a change announcement, catch it. And this is done using a new modifier called onReceive. This accepts a publisher as its first parameter and a function to run as its second parameter. What to run when that thing publishes its change announcement. And it'll make sure this function's called whenever that uh, publisher sends out its change notification. For example, we could catch our timer changing by saying something like this, text or hello world, dot on receive, receive the timer, will be told the new time, and I'll print out the time is now time. And when we run that, what will happen is, it'll run once a second continuously forever and ever and ever until the view goes away. And every time it's fired, it will print out the time is now whatever. Is ticking up slowly, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and so on. So every time a timer ticks, every time it fires, once a second, bang, on receive will be called and it'll print out the time. Now, speaking of stopping the timer, I've stopped it here by pressing command dot, which kills the program in Xcode. It's finished running now. Um, this is more complex to stop because we've got to do a little bit of digging because this timer we made is an auto-connected publisher. That's what it is. So we have to go upstream to its publisher first. Go to what we call an upstream publisher here to find the timer itself. So auto-connected publishing timer, 
timer is above that up here, right? From there, we can go up to the timer publisher and say, cancel yourself. Honestly, if it weren't for co-completion, this would be quite annoying, um, but we can do it here by a bit of the code here. We can say, for example, um, at state private var counter is zero, how many times we've ticked so far. And then we'll say, uh, if uh, our counter is five, then timer dot upstream dot connect to it dot cancel to cancel the upstream timer. Otherwise print out the timer is now time and every time do counter plus equals one. So it'll fire multiple times when it hits counter five, then it'll be canceled. So run the code again, we should see it counts up several times and then stops. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then no more. So we're canceling it by doing this. And again, code completion is so important here because he's like, okay, got my timer. How do I cancel it? And there's like, cancel, no, okay, fine. And then you go, okay, well, maybe it's the upstream thing. Got cancel, nope, okay. Well, and then you dig your way through, sadly, but eventually you find cancel. And that does work, as you can see, it counts up to five takes like that. Before we're done, there is one more important timer concept I want to explain to you. If you're okay with your timer having a little bit of float, you can specify some tolerance. You saw it up here in the, the co-completion earlier. This is really important because it allows iOS to do some energy optimization on our behalf. It allows us to fire the timer not once every second, but at any point between its scheduled fire time, like in one second from now, and the amount of tolerance we give it, right? This means it won't ever fire early. It won't go at 0 0.9 seconds. But if you say, actually, I want a, a tolerance of here, tolerance of say 0 0.5, that'll mean I'm okay with it firing one second or 1.1 or 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, .1 but no more than that, not 1.6 and never earlier than that. So it's very, very clever. And what happens here is iOS will perform what's called timer coalescing. It'll say, you know, I've got 10 timers right now in the system. I could let the CPU sleep a little bit, push these other ones together so they all fire at the same time, so I can do them all at once and then go back to sleep again to save energy. So it'll just push back timers a little bit so the CPU idles more and saves battery power. Um, this is very, very helpful and it, it actually, it's done for free. We just say a tolerance, anything we allow, and it'll do it. What it won't do is drift. So we're saying every one second, tolerance 0.5. It won't be 1.5, then 1.5, then 1.5, 1.5. It won't be like six seconds after four times. It'll fire the next one a bit earlier to catch up a little bit. But it'll make sure for every second, it'll be within half second of your request. I should also say, um, this is best effort. Like if you say every one second, it's not exactly one second, no matter what you say, even with tolerance zero, uh, it'll be 1.005 or something like that. It'll do its best. The system makes no guarantee it'll be exactly every one second.